here over the past year I've slowly become a big fan of wireless charging only wearable accessories like the galaxy watch and galaxy buds which are also wireless charging compatible it makes sense now more than ever I love not having cables all over the place and overall just the convenience factor I've tried quite a few chargers at different price points so if you're in the market or just want to check out some options I hope this video serves you well so without further ado let's dive right in the first two options are coming directly from Samsung and come highly recommended especially if you own a Galaxy Watch or the Galaxy Buds. We have the Wireless Charger Duo from last year and the new Wireless Charger Duo Pad. Both come with LED indicators and a built-in fan to prevent overheating. And yes, there is a very slight sound from the fans. There are two main differences between them. First, the new charger opts for a flat pad over a stand-up design on the left side. Second, and probably the best addition, it features Samsung's Wireless Fast Charge 2.0 on the left pad only. During my testing, it took only 10 to 15 minutes longer to fully charge my phone from an almost dead battery compared to plugging it in. So if charging speed is important to you, the new pad is the only option right now. Keep in mind that only the Galaxy S10 line of phones currently supports this faster 12 watt wireless charging. Also. If charging two phones at the same time, Fast Charge 2.0 will not be available. It will revert to regular Fast Charge. Between the two, I actually prefer the older model's design. The stand ensures that placement is never an issue and allows me to quickly glance over at notifications on my always-on display. If you wirelessly charge your phone overnight, I recommend the old model since it's likely to be on sale for much cheaper. If you're not looking to spend that much, but still want a solution that can charge both your phone and smartwatch, an option I tried out that is pretty good is this wireless charger dual from Elo Beth. It supports fast wireless charging even through some fairly thick cases. It's much more compact compared to Samsung's dual chargers, and although it doesn't have fans, there are vents at the bottom to help keep things cool. You get a pad on the left side to place your phone, and a cradle design for your Galaxy Watch. There's a slight magnet to ensure your watch docks perfectly every single time, and if you use a bracelet styled band, this works better than a pad. A USB-C cable is included in the box, but you'll have to use the wall plug that comes with your phone. My only complaints with this charger is the LEDs. There is a constant red LED light on even when no device is charging. I wish it would turn off when it doesn't detect a device. The light turns to a blinking green LED when charging and solid green when the device is fully charged. If you don't own a Galaxy Watch but want a wireless charger for your phone, the last two chargers could work and have totally different aesthetics. First up, we have the IOTI wireless charging stand with its unique soft touch fabric material design that's available in a variety of colors. The bottom of the stand is rubberized so it won't slide all over the place on smooth surfaces. You get everything needed inside the box, including a wall adapter and a high quality color matching USB-C cable, which is a very nice touch. It can deliver up to 10 watt for Android devices and 7.5 watt for iPhones. The stand will charge your device in both landscape and portrait orientations. I tested it with some relatively thick cases and it was still fast charging without any issue. The LED indicator is tucked away on the left side, so it's discreet and non-obtrusive. Overall, I'm a big fan of this design. It should blend in nicely wherever you place it, whether it be in the living room, the bedroom, or on your desk. If you wanted something a little more industrial, the Galvanox Qi Power Station from Encased is one that my husband has been using. The stand is made completely out of aluminum, but the parts where your phone will sit are lined with TPU to help disperse heat and keep the device from sliding all over the place. In the box, you only get a USB-C cable, so you'll have to use the power adapter that comes with your phone. The stand will identify the device type and alternate between 5 watt, 7.5 watt, or 10 watt to best suit the device. A built-in LED indicator is tucked on the inside part of the stand, and a button right above the USB port cycles the light through three modes, on, dim, and off. It gives off this glow effect, which looks pretty good. There are three LED colors, 
red, green, and blue, which will automatically change colors depending on charging speeds. From my experience with the charger, red is regular wireless charging and blue is for fast wireless charging. If the LED flashes red, it means the device is not charging. My only complaints are that the front lip here makes it very hard to use the bottom base gesture system. The large surface area where the phone rests does make it great for using your phone while charging without worrying about it flying off. That's a wrap for wireless chargers, but since we're on the topic of charging, I also have three power banks that have quickly become favorites of mine. I've mentioned them in previous videos, but thought it makes sense to feature them here too. First up, we got my absolute go-to for trips, the Mophie Power Station PDXL. PD stands for power delivery. According to their website, 10 minutes can get you 20% battery life and 30 minutes of charging can get you up to 50%. I haven't seen speeds that fast with my Note 9, but it's definitely much faster than other power banks I've used. The size, design, and charging speeds makes this one of my favorites. The price tag is probably its biggest drawback. Next up, we have the Mophie Power Station Wireless XL. Like the name implies, this is a wireless charging power bank. I'll be honest, the wireless charging speeds on this thing are not very fast. It's 5 watt regular wireless charging. With that being said, the way I like to use this power bank is as a two-in-one. You can use this like a regular wireless charging pad, and then when you need to get up and go, just unplug it, and now you have a portable power bank using the USB-C cable connection. What's great is that it'll also charge your Galaxy Buds wirelessly. Unfortunately, it's not compatible with the Galaxy Watch though. The last power bank is one that I've been testing more recently, and it's this one from Ugreen. It has a very sleek design, but the main selling feature has to be the embedded USB-C cable. It's perfect for me because it's one less cable I need to worry about on trips or just to keep devices charged up while in bed. This thing charges just as fast as the Mophie Power Station PDXL, and it's cheaper too. You do get a smaller form factor with the Mophie one, but you'll have to decide if that's worth the extra cost. There you go, five wireless chargers and three power bank options to keep your device fully charged. Hopefully you found this helpful. Now, I don't wanna bore you all with too many details, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, peace, bye.